Good evening and welcome to Bad Chat. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, it's a new year. Uh, can you believe it? 2021, we are here. And this is the first official chat for 2021. So welcome, everybody. Hope you guys are good. Hope you guys have rested well and had a good holiday. Uh, but yeah, 2021 is here and we're back in action again. So welcome, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, my name is Temba Madima and I'll be taking us on the journey this evening. We're chatting to a legend, Ruben Ramulefi. He's in here. I can see he's in the building. I'm going to just send him an invite and then we're going to get uh, chatting. So welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm sending him a request. South Africa, good to see you guys again. It's been a while, I know. <laughs> but we're back. We're back, we're back, we're back. Uh, good to see everybody. Welcome, guys. Oh, Ruben Ramulis. Hey, Temba, how's it, man? How are you doing, brother? I'm very well, thank you, man. Bless the favorite of the Lord. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, brother. You're yeah, such a long time since like I've seen you. Um, and yeah, it's 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 always an honor. I mean, you you're a person who always carries such a you know a light spirit. You are. You know, always humble, you know, easy to talk to. And I know there's a lot that's happening in your life. And I mean, we're going to go into, you know, some of your, your greatest moments as well on the track. So it's going to be a good time. <laughs> yes, wonderful, man. It's such an honor. It's a privilege for me. And I just give all the honor and glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's been a wonderful journey. And uh, I'm just grateful uh, to have the privilege to to live this life. Yeah, absolutely. All right, brother. I'm gonna get us started. Um, as is tradition over here, I'm gonna first do an introduction, uh, so that uh, those who are watching, you know, there's some youngsters here that uh, might be seeing who is this Ruben Ramule. They must say, no, the caliber of athlete that's in the building, and then from there on, we'll get into the chat. Is that good with you? Thank you. Thank you, man. Do that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with us this evening, we've got Ruben Ramulefi, and he is, listen very careful, African Championships, 3,000 meters, triple chase, bronze medalist, World University Games, 3,000 meters, triple chase, bronze medalist, Commonwealth Games, finalist in the 300 meters, triple chase, all African Games, uh, 3,000 meters, triple chase, uh, uh, finalist, uh, nine time, nine time. Nine-time SA 3000 meters triple chase champion, and here's my favorite one: the SA 3000 meters triple chase record holder. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruben Ramulefi. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. The just the other day, I I spoke with uh, my kids, and you know, I I shared with them. And I told them that, you know what, this wasn't things that I could dream about because where I come from, I know you from mm. Venda, right? And, and you, you can relate directly uh, to what yeah. I'm about to share. I mean, like where I come from, you know, that's not the kind of dreams you have because your, 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 your background, your, your, your yeah. um, point of reference uh, doesn't include that, you know. Yes, so I exactly. thank Father God for this miracle that he allowed to happen in my life. So... I'm really, I'm honestly very grateful, but also, um, I mean, I spent now time here in Upin and it's now, this year will be my 10th year, but then um, I think it was the most productive years coming back home, and uh. Uh, to be, uh, it was like really God taking me back to, to the origin, and I'm not talking about the origin uh, or my roots in terms yeah. of Upington, in terms of top line where I'm from. Uh, uh. Or Cup where I'm from. No, it's not that. Really getting back to him and, you know, his glory, his image. That, that for me, that, 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 that's basically what it was for me and what it is being back here in Uppington. It's, and it's a wonderful time. It's a wonderful journey. Absolutely. My brother, um, you know, I know you've got, you've got so many amazing stories and so many amazing achievements, you know, that uh, I want us, we're going to work through uh, some of these you know, um, let me, let's do a few welcomes. I know there's a few people here saying, coach, coach. So let's do a few welcomes. And then <laughs> from there on, um, <laughs> I will get started. I see, uh, 
Yaku Miller's here. Welcome, Vernon Throws. Welcome to you, the visionary icon. Morey yeah. from the back. Danny Smith, I see you. Ivano Kutuano, I see you. Menet Bosho, Thunder, Tulani Nka, uh, SM2, who is here as well. Uh, yeah. Taylor Kavana is here. Pakisum Timbu. You know, there's a lot of youngsters and a lot of, you know, athletes that are going to learn a lot this evening. And I know, yeah. you know, one thing I know about you, Ruben, you've got a, a killer mentality. Um, you know, everybody sees the calm, Ruben, but on the track, you know, I, I trained with you as well. Uh, and I know exactly yeah. how ruthless you can be, you know, when it comes to being on time, being prepared, training hard. But we'll get to that. More welcomes, Del Favor. We've got Kevin Turin, Jane T4, QB all the way from yeah. uh, New Zealand. Welcome. Uh, Maliwana Days is in the building as well. Uh, we, need to, we need to organize a chat with Days soon. Now we need some American perspective. ATK man, I see yeah. you, brother. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm not going to get to everybody, but yeah, guys. I'll, I'll try to do more shout-outs as we go. But thanks for joining. Oh, Milan, Marciano is here as well. All right, brother, let's get into this. Obviously, your running journey is one that, you know, it, has to, it started somewhere. You mentioned where you came from and the idea of one day becoming an SA record holder, uh, going to Olympics, traveling the world, best hotels, you know, m- uh, making a living out of the sport was not something that you initially had uh, dreamt of, you know. Um, where, where did your journey start? How did you discover track and field, running, steeplechase, the works? The truth, truth be told is this, um, I always believe with every person, I don't think there's anyone, uh, it's different with anyone. I believe with every person, God comes and he gives you his um, truth, right? Yeah. And then yeah. there comes influences from outside and you follow those influences. Yeah. So I, yeah. I've always had this, this desire in me to, to do athletics. I've always yeah. had a love for it. You know, that time, I mean, like, we didn't have a TV or anything like that. So we would listen to athletics on the radio. And, hey. um, like, like, guys like Zitulela Zinge, you, hey. those were names that I could remember. Um, and, and, and all those guys. Um, and later on, you get to know guys like Hendra Kramala, etc., etc. And, um, but the thing is, just like, as I said, I chose a certain path for a while because... It was the popular route, you know. Yeah. But I knew from 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 child, um, from from being a child, I knew that this is the path God wanted me to go. But as I mm. said, I was disobedient, and I actually really started it at age 23. I turned that year 23 years old. Wow! And um and and that was really listen. It's rather now or never. And yeah. I I thank God for the people that He sent to me. That was adamant, and I mean like. They were nagging me and like, listen, man, you got a talent. You should be doing this. Because at school, I can really point out, I think, five races that I competed in. Uh, mm. From high jump to, you know, uh, 1,500 meters. And um, I didn't do that great. I think in great, um, which is now, like, we were in standards. Like, for us, we were yeah, in yeah. standards at yeah. that, that time. I yeah. mean, I'm 42 years now, you know, so you can make the, the myth, you know. <laughs> you know, so like... <laughs> For us, it was standards. Like so, it was standard five, standard six. I cleared already in standard six um, with a scissor jump, because we didn't have the kind of facilities that you know the the jumping mat and all those kind of things. Yes. So we had to do the scissor jumps uh, into the sand pit and stuff. So I cleared yeah. that time already. Long uh, in high jump, I cleared a one seven five. So yeah. which was I learned later on. It was actually quite good, you know. But yeah, um, a- I. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but I ran away from athletics always. And I had my different fears uh, that I had to face by the grace of God and, and overcame. And, um, but eventually, I, I realized that, you know what, chances come only that much. And I, I cannot choose anymore to run away from the gate. It was pretty much like a, a Jonas, you know, uh, <laughs> where God yeah. really, really had to send a whale and say, listen, man, listen, you got you to gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta decide now. And, and that was it for me. Um, I went 2001, uh, after I finished my two year of college, um, at Appenon College, I went to Johannesburg with a friend of mine. I met him at a a specific college, so we would stay at his uncle's house. And my plan was, um, actually after school, my plan was to to basically go to um, 
to UJ, that was Rao then, and yeah. um, Kaiser, Chiefs, Kaiser Chiefs had an academy there. So the plan was to enroll in this academy to play soccer, and then I was going to pay for my studies uh, to, to study law, basically. But yeah. everything just went the other way around, because like Kaiser Chiefs, I think um, when I arrived there in 2001, I think that was the year that they basically stopped um, their collaboration with, with Rao. And then, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so I started to do athletics actually because I needed to work as well to, to, to find for my, for my stay in Johannesburg and stuff. So working, I couldn't go to, I remember I went to, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, the trials. And uh, at those trials, uh, I, I got a call up to go soccer trials, basically, uh, mm -hmm. at the first division team. And I got a call up for the next day. But then that evening, we got a call that we had to be at an interview, a job interview. And uh, long story short, I went and I never pursued uh, soccer anymore. And I realized, but listen, this is all God, you know, blocking this whole thing, you know. And, um, and, 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 and I thought that I couldn't be disobedient anymore. So, yeah. So for that year, I, I started like, I, I think like even to look at how this happened, we in our job hunting, now, I was the Minister of Finances. I, we didn't have money. So we needed to make sure we, we, we really stretched money, right? So yeah, yeah. my friend and I had to go from Resettonville all the way to Northcliffe. And I mistimed it. And I thought that now from Northcliffe back to Joburg Central is not a long distance, right? And I told him, now we can walk back and then we can save money. And, yeah. and we found that it was actually a very long um, distance that we had to walk. But then when we arrived at, 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 at um, Auckland Park, he said, listen, here's Rao. Let's go there um, and hear if they have an athletics club. And mm. we went there. Uh, we, went, we met Franza Fushia and the rest is history. So I, I enrolled that year and I started with a cross country that year. And the next year, uh, I started running for UJ. Actually, this year and the next year, I enrolled uh, to study LLB first. And then later on, I changed my course to a BA law degree, which I finished and stuff. But then, um, yeah, they only gave me uh, 1,500 rand basari for the year. But for me, it was about, not about the money, but it was about, you know, following God's yeah. purpose. He said, this is what I need to do. So I followed and, um, you know, I'm so happy I did it uh, because spiritually for me, I benefited more than, than I could ever in any other direction. It's amazing, you know, um, you know, when you think about, you know, most stories you hear about like the athletics, it was always, you know, from a young talent, they pursued it for a long time. But for you, your journey started at the age of, of 23, you know, and I think it's, it's so encouraging yeah. because what, what we see a lot now, Ruben, is that we get a lot of young kids, they run well, 16, 17, 18, you yeah. know, by the time they're 19 in first year university, it feels mm. like, you know, they feel like if they haven't uh, made a big, uh, big mark at 20 or 21, it's over, you know, and your, your, your yeah. career is the exact opposite, you know, you started at 23, found your way, and it just went up, 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 up uh, from there, you know, yeah. so, yeah, big ups to you yeah. for following uh, your calling, because, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and I think everybody else who's here knows that, man, I think, you know, and I think 3,000 people chase, they'll never be... And I'm hoping, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a positive person, and, I'm, and I yeah. hope there'll be somebody who will uh, get to your level and do what you did, yeah. you know. But we knew, like every championship, uh, yeah. you know, whether it's worlds or Olympics or Commonwealth Games or African Games, yeah. we've got an athlete who's gonna make the final. And I mean, it was, it was, it was fun to watch, and it was, it brought, yeah. brought so much joy for South Africans as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now I believe there's gonna be, and I don't think in the far future. Um, yeah, yeah. There's going to be someone that's going to do not just um, like, uh, go, I, I don't think it's going to be someone that's going to fill my shoes. He's going to do much better, much, yeah. much, much better than I ever are you do. Gonna, are you going to drop um, a name? Are you going to drop a name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can drop a name. Um, uh, like I have a lot of hope for, 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 for Ashley Smith. It's a guy that yeah. I'm coaching now. I'm coaching Blow. him now uh, in terms of the, the, the 3,000 meter steeple chase. And I don't think... Like, it's not the only athlete that clear. I have the same hope for every other athlete in my group exactly. or that I'm coaching or that I came across. Um, but the thing is, he is doing my event. He's doing the event that, 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 that I am, that, that I did. So um, yeah. the most beautiful part for me 
of him and every other athlete I'm busy coaching is that they fear God. They, they are God-fearing people. And, and, and that's the priority for me first. It's the first point. Because I know that as much as we show all these beautiful things and, and the performances and we share about the hotels we're going to and everything, I know that all of this is just um, a chase after wind. You know, it's vanity mm. in the end of the day. I know the thing that's really going to give you fulfillment is being in Christ. Christ in us is the hope of glory. And that is yeah. one of the things that I, I, I never fear to, to share that with my kids. Um, I tell them that, listen, guys, I mean, you, you caught a few of those performances, right? And, and every time when I go to that podium and I stood on that podium, it was always like, so what? You know, I don't know. Other people uh, maybe had different experiences, but for me, I wanted always what is deeper than that. I also always wanted what is better than that. And it wasn't a gold medal. And I know it's never going to be a gold medal. I know it's never mm. going to be, there's never going to be any record. You know, I wanted the SA record badly. But when I yeah. bought it, it was like, so what? You know, I wanted to be SA champion badly. And I repeated that performance over and over and over. Nice but time. every time it was like, yeah, it was so what, you know. And, and, I, and I believe that when God brought me back to Uppington, it was really to isolate me because it wasn't a, a smart move in terms of, yeah. you know, facilities. Because the closest track in Uppington is like, of, I mean, from where I am right now, is 500 kilometers. That's Kimberley, right? So, and, 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 and for me to travel from here, just to take a flight from here to Joburg, um, a return flight is plus minus 5,000 rand. So that's almost the money that I used to go to Europe and back. So it wasn't the best choice in terms of the flesh to come to Uppington when we look at that. But it was the best choice for Ruben's soul. You know, it was the best yeah. choice for, for everyone else that Father used me to, to inspire in that sense. And not inspire to be Olympic champions or whatever, but to be, you know, children of God, loving his glory, loving his life, the life of Christ Jesus. That was for me the best choice. And I, 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 if I have to make the decision over tomorrow, I will do it anytime again. Because like, when did you last see me on, on, the, on, on, the, on the stage like Olympics or whatever? It was 2011 was the best performance. 2013 was, um, I think, Benin, African champs. But I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not done yet. Yeah, let's, let's just make that clear. I'm not done yet. I'm not retired yet. Because God don't regret gifts, right? Yes. The day I'm done, the day I'm retired is the day when I'm dead. So when you <laughs> go and sing Wahazula, <laughs> that's, when, that's, that's when I'm retired. So because like, I mean, there's just so much my life needs to minister. And I'm looking forward to this journey. It's an awesome journey. Absolutely, brother. You know, I like that. You know, this, this thing of uh, retirement... Uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's not my lingo. It's not in my vocab as well. I'm like, how can you yeah. retire from your purpose, you know? But let's, let me yeah. not stay there too long. I need to move on, you know? I've got some questions I need yeah. to get to, Ruben. Uh, but I hear you. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's do a few welcomes. Yeah. I see uh, Coach Paul Horis is in the building. Uh -huh. I mean, he's, he's, he's doing fantastic work with the athletes. Uh, he's <laughs> yes, yes. At, uh, yeah. in Pretoria now. Uh, I see Ayam Peño. Yeah. Proud of you. Well. Yeah, we've got uh, Andre Rix is here. Uh, shout yeah. out to Jumpmaster T.S. Limau. He's also in mm. here all the way from uh, United States of America. Uh, we need to get these guys. Yeah, but this year we're going to get more. We're going to get uh, more conversations. We're going to chat with more people. We need to get some coaches yeah. uh, uh, as well. So, yeah. So, let, let's get to yeah. the first time you get an, an opportunity to represent... Um, the United States of South Africa. Um, yeah. <laughs> the Republic. How, yeah. How, how, how did that feel? You know, you get an opportunity to put on, uh, or they give you this kit, you know. Yes, this, you know, I mean, all, all the history, whatever you thought, you know, and then you get an opportunity mm. to represent South Africa. What's going into your, in, through your mind? You know, I want to hear this. I want to hear this. You know what? When I started athletics, um, I heard things like, you know what, you started too late. Um, it will mm. take you at least 10 years to, 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 to get to that level. So, you yeah. know, there's a lot of experts out there. So, and I want, I want to tell people <laughs> that, you know what, if God didn't say, don't listen to anyone, you know, just, yeah. just listen to it because he communicated to you first. So yeah, you exactly. must, you must, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. He's not going to use how many people. Yeah, he's going to use people because you ignore what he's saying. 
but he's going to talk to you first because he, he can talk to you because he's God, you're right. So that's the important thing is to listen to what he says about your life and to follow mm-hmm. that. You know, there's going to be, there's going to be disappointments. Man, I'm can telling I, you, can 2004. I, can I just hold you there, Ruben? Can I just hold you there? I mean, yeah. what you're saying there is, I mean, it's so powerful because, you know, many a times, and especially with a sport like athletics, you know, there's, there's yeah. too many experts. Uh, some, some, some are, I mean, a lot of them are there to help us. But I mean, what you're talking about yeah. is that, you know, it's that, you know, inside your, your, your spirit, there's, you know like that you don't have to be told or you don't even know how you're going to yeah. get there or how it's going to happen you know what i mean and i think that, that that's, yeah. a, that's a message yeah. to the young athletes who are out there listen guys if you yeah. love this sport and you love this gift you were given with all your heart you know mm. pursue it yeah. like it yeah. doesn't matter what yeah. people are saying and hey you're crazy yeah. to be running in the streets you're crazy to be doing this yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Carry on, brother. Yeah. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no problem. No problem. My my uncle, for instance, said I um, when I would come back home and I would I would run in the streets and stuff, and he would say that he was thinking that I'm bewitched, you know. <laughs> But when he saw me on TV, there was like, yeah. you know, okay, now I understand. Now I get thinking. it. <laughs> yeah. Now I get it. You know, so people won't always get it. You know, yeah. they won't get it. But you need to be true to what God told you, and you need to follow that regardless. So for me, like, you can imagine all the obstacles. And the amazing thing is, like, I didn't know even where 800 meters start when I, when I started running. So, like, I was really, kids there, kids taught me. Everything I knew of athletics, kids taught me. Master Seastad was my first coach. Hans Seastad at, at, at Furen too. Um, yes, yes, fa- yes. I prayed, I prayed when I realized this is the path I need to follow. And I, I prayed, I said, Father, I don't know how to choose a coach. I don't know athletics. I know there's a passion and a love for this thing, but I don't know uh, how to do this. So I, you need to, t- to tell me how to choose my coach. And something that came to my heart was that I need to choose someone that, that never stopped learning. Because yes. what is in me um, needs to be, I need to be led by someone that's never gonna, that's never gonna halt my, my, my progress. And yes. I'm telling you, Mr. Hans Estad was exactly that person for me. And um, I had to part ways with him When, 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 when Father God told me, listen, my, my season with him is done. And that was after nine years. Um, mm. and, 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 and for two years, I, I, I worked with Coach Denson Machoki, um, hey, which was also Coach basically, basically just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was basically a transition for me to get to the point where I'm at right now, where I coach myself and I coach other kids. But yeah. I say I coach myself, but it's basically the Holy Spirit teaching us. And, 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 and so just basically them... You know, I'm following his lead and they're following my lead. Um, so that's it. Because, you know, I don't know nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm totally, um, when it comes to these things, I, I'm really uh, a layman. So, so I don't know nothing and I, I just trust him to lead me. But getting to your question of, of how did I feel, um, it was just really a dream for me. It was like, man, um, this is happening now. You way up, and this is the reason why I gave you that background, is that, coming from all this and coming, going through all this, it's like, mm-hmm. there's just moments where that, that, that happiness, that excitement, and it's like almost that disbelief of this thing is happening to me, you know, uh-huh. that, it, that it strikes you and it's like, and listen, you are actually part, you are actually busy living this life, you know, so yeah. I thank God for, for, for that as well. I mean, like uh, my first, I remember 2003, I had to qualify for the 5,000 meter. That was my first national colors that I made. For world mm. students, right? Mm. So I had to, to do the 5,000 meter because we were like now juggling around trying to find my event, you know, mm-hmm. from 1,500 meter, 800 meters and stuff. And my coach says, no, I believe you are a 10,000 meter athlete. And, you know, I, I didn't like running that long, you know. Yeah. So basically, I had one race to, 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 to qualify in and that was in Durban. Um, yeah. And the time I had to run was at 13.53. And I, mm. by the grace of God, ran that time. And for me, it was just like amazing. But again, the thing that make it so wonderful for me was always that God promised and he delivered. You know, it wasn't yeah. really about the, ex- the, the occasion or the achievement. It was always about, man, this God is real that people are talking about. Remember, I grew up in church and all those kind of things. But now I get to experience him. And this is the athletic journey for me. It was always about me discovering God and that he is real. Me discovering his son, Jesus Christ, and that he is real. That is it all. That's all it is to me and, 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 and nothing less, nothing more than that. So for yeah. me, there's always been that. I mean, in Athens as well, 
I remember that whole year I was basically injured. Um, the way that he took me, I remember we quali- I qualified with the A24, but there was five uh-huh. other guys that ran things like, uh, thank you so much, JJ. There was five other guys that ran uh, like A26, Peter, Peter Sitole and all those guys. They ran A26. Uh-huh. So uh, you know how it is with B qualifiers. I just missed the A qualifier with a, a point, uh, one of a second, right? So yeah. basically, uh, basically, we had to go and prove our fitness. I think that was in, in Congo, DRC Congo. And yeah. I had the oldest injuries. I haven't been training on, on the track. I was just in the pool and stuff. And so for me, it was really a uphill battle. And um, like nights of crying, I'm telling you, I didn't know what it is like to, to live without pain. Pain was my story every day. Uh-huh. And so, uh-huh. so I arrived in Congo and not feeling ready. I remember when I went out the first time, I felt that my body is totally not ready for this. But then I just said that, listen, if I got to not go to the Olympics this year, then it must be because both my legs are off. But I'm not <laughs> going to surrender this, you know. And, yeah. I, and I went, and by the grace of God, I went and I made the cut. You know, I was the best South African in that competition. So I, I qualified um, to go basically to, 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 to the Olympics and stuff. My first time I, I was without pain was when I was already more than a week in the village um, wow. at, at, in Athens. So, like, all this time, I qualified for the Olympics and stuff, but all this time it was such a, 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 a stressful yes. time yeah, because, yeah, like, yeah. I'm battling with injuries and I hear reports that Saskok is going to replace me with uh, someone else and stuff. So, like, all these things, it doesn't give you opportunity to enjoy Remember, mm-hmm. and, and, and just to mention this, like, remember I, October of 2003, I switched to the steeplechase. That was for the first time in my life that I did something that I said I will never do. Toboho mm-hmm. Komane once told me, listen, let's go do the steeplechase. And I said, I will never do it in my life. <laughs> and now God gave me through my coach command to do it, and I had to do it. I fell over the first uh, water barrier, and the choice was just like between laughing or allow people to laugh at you. And, you know, I yeah. chose to laugh. And I, work, I got up, I won, and I like winning. So I win that race, and I said, this is the event that I'm going to see through. And then five months after that, I ran my A24, by the grace of God. And, and so, yeah. So I remember that day when I was, like, healed completely by the grace of God. That, that was a miracle. I, I was so happy. I felt like jumping, you know, jumping around. So I look around me, you know, if someone don't support me and, and think that I'm crazy, you know, but uh, that it was awesome. I remember the first time I walked into the, um, into the stadium, the, 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 the mo- I think it was the, the morning, not the evening of, of, of our steeplechase race. Um, I've never in my life seen so many people. I was intimidated. I felt that, no, man, I, I need to somehow get out of this race. I didn't want to run. I, I felt that, listen, can I not just get a running tummy so I can turn around <laughs> and, you know, and have an excuse not to run? But then... Um, the Lord made me see someone with a South African flag um, mm-hmm. right at, ab- about it where we're starting. And so I, I saw this flag and somehow it just brought joy to my heart. I went to this person and I greeted them and, you know, and I felt so excited and energized yeah. and I ran. And, um, you know, I didn't make it through to the final at that first one, but it was awesome. Yeah, I think it was, it was, it was definitely like uh, the beginning. And I mean, even the way, I mean, your journey, like, I mean, if I read some of the... the, the, the the statements here, I'll do a few welcomes as well. I see guard your eyes, it is in the building. Uh, Coach uh, yeah. Prince Lou Diabia, welcome to you, sir. We've got Magic. Uh, mm-hmm. T Magic is here. Andre Rix is uh, in here as well. I see ATK man says, looking at the age you started, one can mm-hmm. see that uh, we hit prime at different times and hard work really yeah. pays. I like that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. You know, and, I, and I, when, when I'm also training with the youngsters, I always tell them, I say, listen, if you, you guys just have to run long enough to get to your peak, you know, and our peak is not yeah. the same because yeah. sometimes, you know, you, you're always looking over and you've got all these uh, up and coming. I mean, look at sprints in South Africa. It's a crazy new yeah. era where these young kids are running amazing times at such a young yeah. age, you know what I mean? Yeah. We haven't seen that in yeah. middle distance, for instance. And you just have to understand. Yeah. And then you get, uh, you go overseas and you've got the Inga Brixton brothers, that youngster. He's doing things that, you know, a lot of 
so it's just we don't have the same time you know and the thing is just yeah. about um, putting in the hard work being consistent but i mean i don't i don't think there's a replacement for passion and love you know for for what you do yeah. because that will fuel yeah. you for as long as forever you know almost you got to love what you do if you don't love what you do remember you don't feel every day like going to training right ah, of course. and and sometimes and sometimes you train hard hey and you don't do not get the results you know hey. sometimes you train hard and you get injuries you get disappointments yeah. sometimes yeah, yeah. you perform and you don't yeah. get the sponsorships and the support from anyone right yeah, yeah. but then what is the thing that's going to encourage you what is the thing that's going to motivate you you know you yeah. cannot point a finger to administration or to coach or to your or parents for that matter you know you and the end of the day you are responsible in the end of the day when you the regrets you going to sit with is the regrets that you going to die with you know yeah, so yeah. you need to make sure that you love your life and you live a life without regrets and that's that's for me the thing i want to live a life without regrets and i'm going to pursue everything that god tells me to pursue i don't care people can think i'm crazy i don't have a a, a, a legacy to protect i don't know there for one and the only okay. name that i i need to honor with my life is jesus christ ruben doesn't mean a thing you know uh people will forget about me tomorrow actually yeah, a yeah. lot of them already forget about me <laughs> so and i don't care about it you know i don't care about yeah. it it's for me it's about living one life and this is this one life god gave me and i'm going to re- be responsible with it you know if it you know yeah. if i don't if i never in my life win a, a a medal i don't care about it if i never in my life break a record anymore I don't care about it. If I never in my life make an Olympic team anymore, that's what I still aspire to. Not in the Masters, but in the seniors. That's still the things that I aspire to do. Uh, running the Olympics, running the World Champs and stuff. But if I never do that again, I don't care. As long as I step on the track, even if I'm last, as long as my life says that, listen, God, do not regret gifts. I am honoring yeah. Christ Jesus with my life. His glory shines through me. and it makes a a 21 year old boy that wanted to give up say that but if that 42 43 year old man still runs and still think that he's going to uh, break world records so who am i you know yeah. so if it, if if that can happen if if it brings hope to someone's life then then already i won yeah absolutely i mean it's exactly that you know it's about Yeah I mean it's more you know what I mean my coach always says uh, you know coach uh, JJ Smith he always says like you know I don't only want you to to be a, a good athlete you know you must be a good person you know when you whatever you're doing you know it must just make you a better person when you're on the track uh, on and off you know and I mean the, the lessons and things you learn from track and field are so amazing I want to mm. run through two things quickly because each time you're yeah. running out we've got a few minutes to go yeah. uh let's do a shout yeah. out to Rantu Mokopane i mean he's one of those oh. uh, steeple chase athletes you know yeah uh, a machine a yeah. machine um yes yes and, yes uh, you know very good talent hoping, very good talent we're hoping to see him you know get back you know and mm. get, come back strong as well you know he's had a few challenges as well but yeah. i mean we know he's a, he's a outstanding athlete all right so let's move Actually, there's a, a few things you need to move to uh so uh what is it 2011 obviously that that's uh was a big year for you um yeah. 2011 uh going towards uh, world champs you know uh, uh breaking as well the the south african record with a time of if i'm not mistaken uh eight i know it's in 811.50 yeah yeah 811.50 oh, yes so Tell us about I want to hear about that uh, you know what we will 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 we'll close it on about there and then we'll do a proper closing as well. Yeah. Um tell us okay. about that year the journey I mean I know this time you you trained yeah. with the Kenyan coach coach Dan Muchoki yeah. uh yeah. amazing coach. Uh, yeah. I know I also had the privilege yeah. of training with you for a few months in that time as well. Uh, and yeah. you you yeah. you it was killed, awesome. Yeah. You nearly killed me. <laughs> it, it was awesome. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was uh, awesome it was awesome I, i like your art <laughs> yes i le- listen like I, i think in that year really spiritually it was it was an amazing year for me and yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and and but also physically it was a challenging year for me uh yeah. i think it was the hardest i've ever trained in my life yeah, and um, like hard. i would i would i would like yeah uh, we we went on a camp in in, in st moritz uh, switzerland 
and we trained uh, there for a couple of mon- months ne yeah? and um every day three sessions 6 o'clock in the morning 10 o'clock um at my second session 4 o'clock my third session and on a easier day it was like two sessions um then it's going to be 6 o'clock again he believed in 6 o'clock we must do our first session so 6 o'clock my first session in the morning and then i would do 4 four o'clock my my second session that's now on a easier day and on a mm. recovery day or like a, a rest day i would do one session that would be only 6 o'clock in the morning that i go out for a jog so seven yeah. days a week that was the training you know so three of those days three sessions a day two of those days it was two sessions a day um i think in that year i was probably the most consistent uh, there i must say but i don't think that level of training i will ever be able to 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 repeat because um i think on my body it was quite hard and it took a lot yeah. out of me i had to after that year uh, really take time out of uh, training i would i would go to competitions i mean the next year i was not training at all but i was still running a 24 you know so but yeah. i wasn't training at all but um i couldn't my body couldn't actually you know cope with it uh, uh yeah. so um yeah but i think my perspective of training now is totally different than than it was then um yeah, yeah. because i believe in the end of the day of 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 listening to your body i also believe in 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 in, in, in proper recovery i believe in an mm-hmm. proper overload and stuff and so but 2011 i think that is the time also father god more clearly spoke to me about a wilderness experience but it's really about our experience that takes us back to him where he introduced uh, himself to us as, as a person and so basically that was the journey for me in that year and uh, my expectations was high for 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 Diego 20, 2011 because i thought that i i could be at least in the top 3 in the finals yeah. and 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 i mean i went through the i went through the through the to the uh, semis which is our our first round basically uh, ran a fs record i remember um Hotso spoke to me that morning and he was like man you going to win this championship with the 812 and i was like well if, if if in my heart i was just like if this is what god won for me it will happen but you know i got first this round to get through and i ran the 812 i mean 811.50 oh, i ran it in the, in that semi and then now it was the finals in the finals i led to about two laps to go and then um one of the guys from uganda i think it was benjamin he just cut in front of me dropped the pace and i totally just lost my rhythm i panicked and i and i and i tried to 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 know sort of come out but then i was boxed in so now i went totally back instead of just be- come up so i should have waited for the hurdle because everyone normally spread out at the hurdle but in that moment i was thinking about how yeah. i felt in my warm up how I, i felt even through that run because i decided to take the lead in the final because I really couldn't find my rhythm. I felt totally out of sorts. I, my body just really didn't respond. And I thought the best thing for me is just to run. And if 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 something happen in in uh, like uh yeah. in the latest uh, latest stages of the race, then it happens but I just go I'm just going to run and maybe I'm going to get my my rhythm during the race. And uh, it never happened. And so when that happened, I I panic for for all these reasons and stuff. And so um i drove back and um i finished i think in 12 yeah. with a 8 um 836 yes. and uh, i was very very disappointed so i crossed the line and i'm like and god i did all these things i i worked so hard i i i i sacrificed life with family and friends and you know it was just like me for how many months just yeah. here in, in st moritz and 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 away from my family and stuff and so and um mm-hmm. like as i was going to the mix zone remember we always had to go through the mix zone to get to the to our to our dressing rooms where we would yeah. change now into our our our, our track suits and stuff and 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 our uh, running shoes i mean our trainers um now i went through this interviews but when i was busy with this interview the holy spirit reminded reminded me of a a vision he showed me already some time before that yeah. that i was in a final in arena 836 and i was 11 and i was so disappointed when i saw this vision that i was like and i mean why did i do all these things strict diets strict training regimes and stuff and now this happens and then um so now i was in a rush to just get through this interviews and to get to the dressing room and to see on the scene what was my position and it confirmed to be the same and i remember on yeah. one of the statements when i remember this 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 um this this vision 
I told the guys, even if I have to run at age 66, I know I'm going to win a world a gold medal or on that level, I'm going to run and I'm going to win a gold medal. Because also the Lord showed me that at the same level, I'm running and I'm winning that gold medal and stuff. So I'm basically now doing all those things. I'm doing it, waiting on the word of the Lord. Um, he proved to me then what he showed me was the truth. And so what he showed me after that was also the truth, you know. So for me, that is what it is. And um, um, while I'm not winning the, the gold medal at the moment yet, uh, I'm winning souls for him. That is the most important part. You know, the gold medal is just going to be a byproduct yeah. of everything else happening in my life. So that's basically 2011. And, um, and yeah, I moved in the end of that year, I moved to Uppington. Um, I realized that I had to, um, you know, made that change because it was important for me spiritually because I was sliding. I was, I, was, I was now following all the things that the world is following and I was neglecting my life, my relationship with him. And uh, that was the most important part uh, to get back home and, and to also um, give opportunity to the kids here, you know, yeah. in my growth uh, to grow with me. So this is the amazing uh, uh, privilege I have now to see kids uh, uh, training with me and I train with them and we share the knowledge that the Holy Spirit revealed to us together. And you know what? Um, we, we'll see what, what the future holds. And I believe Father God is just going to allow for his perfect world to, to suffer us. Absolutely. I see AAC's Pista uh, saying one of the greatest mm -hmm. athletes. Uh, we've got uh, Rouge Wolf, uh, Iron Grind, saying inspiring mm -hmm. Ruben. And uh, ATK man says, we live once, let's not regret opportunities we didn't grab. Absolutely. My brother, we're going to yeah. wrap it up. Hey, time is gone. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, yeah. I really appreciate everything you've done. You know, the essay. That essay record is still sitting there, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, and the, the joy that you brought through the stupid chase for South Africans, man, we'll never forget those uh, memories. I wish mm. Backtrack was around then so that we could have these races for these youngsters to see, you know. Yeah. But they can get yeah. it on YouTube, you know, they can get it at World yeah. uh, Champs and all those as well. But thanks a lot, yeah. brother. Thanks for making time to come here. I really do appreciate it. Uh, mm. And thanks for, for this. We're going to continue uh, this uh, journey. Uh, we'll be chatting yeah. to more athletes as well as we go. But thanks for your time, and we really appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Take care, thank brother. you, my brother. And thanks for everyone. Yeah, Ciao. thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it straight from Ruben Ramulefi. Uh, yes, he is a legend, and it was an honor to have him here. We'll be back again Thursday. We've got a speech that's coming up. Uh, stay, stay tuned. I don't want to say too much. You must come and see what's happening yourself. You know, take care, guys. Have a good evening. Uh, and God bless Ruben. Thanks a lot, brother. Take care. We'll Thank you, my you. brother. Thanks. All, right. All the best. Okay, bye. Bless you. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.